What's going on guys? Um, I'm gonna kind of circle back around. I know uh, a while back I talked about doing some sharpening videos. I kind of backed off of some of those a little bit because I found when I was trying to get everything on camera and centered in the frame, I, 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 I wasn't as efficient as I needed to be um, in my sharpening process. But I wanna talk about some knives today that I did sharpen on uh, I, I'm going to talk about the equipment as well that I sharpened on my Shepton uh, Pros, my glass stones here. Uh, this was a kit that I bought and it has three different stones and it even comes with this uh, stand. All of this is a, a are, all of these are Shepton products. The stone that I've used the most is the 500 grit, but I also have the <clears throat> 2000 grit. And I have the 8,000 grit. And I primarily bought these finer grits for my, um, for my uh, kitchen knives, but I don't really, I haven't really delved into those finer grits yet. I've primarily used the 500 grit and I finished the 500 grit edge with, sorry, this leather strop here. I don't remember where I got this leather strap from. Um, I don't, but it's not important. It's it's smooth cowhide, and I use Ken Schwartz uh, one micron CBN uh, spray. Talk to a lot of guys that know a lot of stuff about sharpening. Uh, there's CBN, and then there's another version. The other version is more expensive. Buy the CBN. They said unless you're going to a finer grit than one micron, the CBN is perfectly fine. So. That is my sharpening progression. Now, <clears throat> what I sit my stones on is this Suhiro uh, sink bridge. And this was kind of expensive, uh, not gonna lie to you. I think this was like, I don't know, it feels like it was like $60 or something like that. But this has been very effective for me. It's adjustable. You turn these screws here and you can move this in and out. You can see there's lots of adjustment there. This is, you can tighten them back up and it'll stay set for your sink. So I can just sit this on the sink and I'm ready to go. Um, been a very uh, effective tool. It's got drainage holes here on either side. It's stainless steel, so it hasn't rusted or anything like that. I just sit it out on the sink until it dries off and I put it back up. So it's been very, uh, helpful. It also has these rubber rubber feet. You can also use these taller rubber feet here to sit it on a flat surface if you just want to use this to raise a stone up off of a flat surface in and of itself. Um, like I said, I guess I should have shown you all this. This is a stand. You can kind of see here. There's a lip right here and you can sit these stones on here like this. And I sit this whole assembly on top of that sink bridge that I showed you, and that's how I sharpen my knives. Now, some guys use a tub, like a, a Tupperware tub or something like that. I sharpen right on the uh, sink itself, and I've had decent luck with that. Some people say that raising that stone up will help, but um, <laughs> I, I haven't done that, so I've, I've kind of gotten used to the way I do it now. Now, with all that being said, you know my tagline is, a lazy man carries a dull knife. Well. I have been a little bit lazy. These three knives here were a little bit dull, so I went on ahead and sharpened them up. And I kind of wanted to show you guys these knives today. Uh, I think that I have now been freehand sharpening for, like seriously freehand sharpening for, I don't know, maybe six months, maybe. Um, maybe since like Thanksgiving. Well, no, no, it has to be long. Yeah, it has to be a little bit longer than that. Maybe about eight months. Uh, now, honestly, I have not been sharpening as much as I should on the uh, freehand system. Now, I do use my Wicked Edge some, but <coughs> as far as the freehand system, so this is what, what I've gotten on my Jason Guthrie Scout. You can see here, and it's not, it's not perfect, but it is sharp. It is pretty even. There are a few scratches on the blade itself that aren't really coming up, at least not through the viewfinder. I did also scrape it a little bit on each shoulder of this plunge grind, but this is a user knife for me, so I don't mind that. 
It is very sharp. Uh, it's not quite as sharp as something I would get off of my Wicked Edge, but again, I only went used the 500 grit uh, Shafting Glass Pro and the uh, One Micron Diamond Paste uh, Diamond Spray on the leather strop. So. I'm not saying that this knife couldn't get sharper in someone's hands that were more skilled, uh, but by the same token, I wasn't exactly looking for uh, scalpel sharp on any of these blades per se. So that is this knife here. <clears throat> here, this, well, let me talk a little bit about the sharpening of each one as well. This knife, uh, we always talk about behind the edge thickness and you know, some people think it's a waste of time to talk about that. Some people think it, it doesn't make a difference. Even if you don't think it makes a difference in cutting performance, when you have a, a, a knife that is thinner behind the edge down here at the bottom, you're going to have a smaller bevel. The smaller the bevel, the less steel you're going to have to remove to get a knife sharp. So it's going to get sharper faster. And also you're going to be removing less steel. So you're going to have a longer sharpening life. So. Take that as, as your mileage may vary, but um, even if you don't think the cutting performance makes a difference, a knife that's thinner behind the edge is going to sharpen faster and, and be able to be sharpened more times. So that is this knife. It, it took maybe, man, uh, maybe five or 10 minutes to get this sharp once I finally figured out the angle and held it consistently. Um, it also, because of this little harpoon here, it was very easy to hold on to that harpoon and kind of uh, work the knife in this direction here. So very easy to sharpen this knife. I found it pretty easy. Um, a burr did form. The burr, it was a little bit stubborn to get off, but not the worst I've ever had, but it was a little bit stubborn to, to remove. This knife is my 21 in Singo, and I think you can see here, I hope you guys are able to see this bevel. You can see that side, and then you can see this side. You can see up here at the tip, my angle was off a little bit, so they're not quite even on both sides at the tip, but the rest is pretty doggone even. And this knife did get sharp. Now, honestly, this was the most challenging knife to sharpen out of the entire group. I just kind of kept chasing that angle. Uh, this was also the first knife that I sharpened. So, you know, I, I, I might have been just warming up or whatever, but it did eventually get sharp. Again, you just have to take your time, uh, pay attention. And you, if you're if you, really the best way, if you're kind of starting out, would still be to use that marker, mark the bevel. Uh, make a few passes, see where you're removing steel, and adjust accordingly. That would be the best way to do that. But this knife did sharpen up pretty easily. Uh, I will say I think a stronger burr formed on this knife than on this knife. Now, these are two different steels, um, and we're kind of talking about some uh, more in-depth things here when I'm talking about how easy was it to form a burr, how easy was it to remove that burr. Uh, I can get into all that stuff a little bit more if you guys would like that. Just comment down below. <clears throat> but this night, this night formed a more crisp burr and the burr came off uh, a little bit easier for me. This knife here, it, it kind of took a little bit to, to get that burr to form, but I think part of that was me chasing that angle. Once it did form, it didn't seem to feel as defined and it also came off pretty easily. It got sharp, but I will say out of these three knives I sharpened, this one is definitely still the dullest out of the three. All three will cut foam book paper, as you can see on my uh, Instagram page. And I posted, it's August 17th, 2020 when I'm talking about this. So if you go back <clears throat> to about that timeline on my Instagram page, you can see that there. So the last knife, um, and this is something that's very interesting. I had never uh, sharpened an Emerson knife or a single-sided knife freehand before and you know guys are always like oh that's stupid it needs a bevel on both sides you know who cares it's not gonna be easier to sharpen that da, 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 set and the other I'll have to tell you guys um, <laughs> with this bevel being the width that it is it was very easy to find that angle um, and I think you can see there's little to no variation of me from that factory angle. As a matter of fact, you can still see some of the factory scratches there. I think there are a few more right here, but 
it was very easy for me to find that angle. This was probably the quickest knife to sharpen uh, and the one that stayed the closest to its uh, factory profile. And then I just, I ran it on the back. I probably ran it a little too much on the stone. I probably should have just run it on the strop. But you can see there's a little bit of a, a, a micro bevel forming there, uh, much more so than what came from the factory. But this knife is, if you know how sharp an Emerson knife is from the factory, this knife is as sharp, if not a little bit sharper. I mean, it's it's it, it, would, it would cut you pretty easily. So this was the easiest knife to sharpen, and it was the knife that got the sharpest for me. Um, it did form a burr. That burr felt pretty crisp, but not quite as crisp as this burr, and the burr was a little bit harder to take off. Um, again, I can get into some of the reasoning for that stuff. If you comment down below, we can talk about that a little bit. Um, but I just want to talk to you guys about kind of where I'm at with my sharpening, show you guys some examples. And really, my, my main push here lately has been, I always hear guys talking about um, they're scared to sharpen, they, they haven't sharpened, they've got a sharpening system or they have a sharpening stone, but they haven't used either or because they're, they're just scared. Sharpening a knife is like learning how to drive a manual transmission vehicle. I could sit you in the passenger seat all day. I could press the clutch. I could shift the gears. I could do all of that stuff. Show you, tell you, walk you through it step by step. You're not going to learn until you actually get in that driver's seat and you start banging some of those gears yourself. Sharpening is the same exact way, guys. Just start. It, everybody has a, a kitchen drawer with a few old, dull, either chef knives or steak knives. Grab one of those out. If you don't have one of those, go to Walmart, get a three or five dollar uh, chef knife, um, uh, Santuco knife or something like that. Run it across the stone, dull it, and then try practice sharpening it. The only way you're going to get better is if you actually, or the only way you're going to learn is if you actually start. So that would be my suggestion to you all. That's my hope for these types of videos is that it's a motivation for you all. No, it, mine aren't perfect. Yes, they, they're sharp enough to cut phone book paper. Um, no, they're not going to win any, any uh, beauty awards. No, I didn't sharpen them the fastest. Uh, I'm sure some people would criticize some of these edges, but at the end of the day, they're sharp and I made them sharp. And I did that by using my freehand stones, um, which is, is where I'm at now. I'm trying to learn some freehanding. <clears throat> but I also have the Wicked Edge, which I think most of you guys know I'm, I'm pretty adept at, but I have 10 years plus of experience on that system. So that's a little bit of a different ball game, but I've rambled on enough, guys. I appreciate you guys watching. Remember, a lazy man carries a dull knife.